welcome to our first ever combined convention seminar virtual training and president's message. I am here in the Pioneer Memorial Museum in the ZCMI room and I feel like I'm surrounded by pioneer artifacts that make me feel like I'm in the right place. I would like to give you a report on the overall health of our organization according to statistics from June 1st of 2019 until May 31st of 2020 of this year. We have 199 companies, camps 1,006, members 35,000, associates 1,369, members at large about 1,400, New members this year, 754. Satellite museums, 128. DUP markers, 582, with three more under consideration. We have had 2,139 histories turned into DUP this year, and 10 brand new photos to add to our collection. The volunteer hours of ISDP, ISDUP are impressive. From the International Board, we have over 12,000 hours. From our docents, over 1,600 hours. And from our other volunteers, over 2,500 hours. A lot of hours go into our Daughters of Utah Pioneers organization. I'd like to give you a report on the books and music CDs. They are available in the museum and can be purchased or picked up at the museum with curbside service, or they can be ordered online. This is a difficult time for all of us with the coronavirus, isn't it? I want to give you some very, very kindly advice. Be very careful in planning your meetings and gatherings. Follow all the guidelines of your local health organizations. And as soon as you're ready to start, be safe. Wear masks if you feel you should, and make sure to practice social distancing. Be very safe, be kind to each other, care for each other. And we really hope that everything will be well so that we can start our new DP year in September with full meetings, but we'll see what the time brings. I would now like to give you some information about our ISDUP monthly bulletin. We send out a bulletin from ISDUP once a month and it goes in email to all the regional representatives and company presidents. It is also posted on the front page of our homepage for ISDUP. Please read these bulletins. They will give you all kinds of updated information that you need to know for your organization. Billy Allred has prepared a financial report for me to present to you, and I will read her words at this time. To all members of the International Society Daughters of Utah Pioneers, Daughters, as prescribed in the Constitution and Bylaws, Article 3, Section 4E, the following is the written financial report to be presented at the International Convention as reviewed by the firm of Larson and Company, certified public accountants. Larson and Company has completed a financial compilation report with disclosures for the year ended May 31st, 2019, and will be engaged to do the same for the year ending May 31st, 2020. The DUP Executive Committee that oversees all financial decisions believes that all areas of income received expenditures made, contributions received, and assets of DUP have been recorded and administered in accordance with appropriate accounting practices, policies, and procedures for the year ended May 31st, 2020. Here is an accounting of how your $15 yearly DUP dues are used. One, ISDUP seminar and convention. The expenses of the 2019 seminar held in June and the convention held in October of 2019 at Woods Cross High School were $7,808. To make a comparison, 
the 2018 seminar and convention held at the Davis Convention Center cost $37,534. The savings for holding these events in a school instead of a convention center and serving refreshments instead of lunch was $29,726, which calculates to be 79% savings. District conventions. Board members are reimbursed for their travel expenses only. They are not reimbursed for the expenses of any family members who travel with them or for any personal side travel associated with the trip. They are not reimbursed for the time it takes for preparation for the trip or the time spent on the trip. Most of the conventions were canceled this year, so we will use the cost of expenses for the prior year for this report. The total spent on conventions in 2018 to 2019 was $18,682. Payroll. The ISDUP employs three full-time employees, including museum curator, museum secretary, and museum building manager. We also pay part-time employees for the gift counter and an IT specialist for the museum. Payroll expenses are $138,119 yearly. Lessons. The cost to produce and pre print our lesson books last year was $38,686. This included the cost of our professional typesetter. All writing and editing of lessons, writing the foreword, table of contents, index, and the appendix of maps were produced by donated hours of the lesson committee and other volunteers. Ongoing charges. Our museum building belongs to Daughters of Utah Pioneers. The land our building sits on belongs to the state of Utah. The Utah government budget pays for many of our utilities, maintenance on our building, all yard work and snow removal, and other expenses. The security for our building is provided by the Utah Highway Patrol. We are required to play to pay for our own internet and phone costs monthly. We are also responsible for the following ongoing expenses, accounting fees, postage, maintenance of copy machines and computers, printing expenses, storage fees, administrative costs, office supplies and equipment, archive repair costs, credit card machines, and bank charges. These expenses that keep our museum open and our organization functioning average $10,747 a month, making a total of $128,965 yearly. This report is signed Billy Allred, ISDUP Treasurer. We feel that we watch over the dues of DUP members very carefully and spend the money as wisely as we can. We are daughters of the future and keepers of the past. Annie Taylor Hyde, along with 40, 45 other members, joined in her home on April 11, 19, 1901 and organized Daughters of Utah Pioneers. Annie Taylor Hyde gave this quote in that meeting to all the other women who were there. Ever since the Pioneer Jubilee, I have felt deeply impressed with the importance and desirability of the children of the pioneers becoming associated together in some kind of an organization, which would have for its object the cementing together in the bonds of friendship and love, the descendants of those who so faithfully stood shoulder to shoulder in braving the difficulties and overcoming the all but insurmountable obstacles that opposed their fixed determination to seek out and establish the happy homes and inheritances in these mountain vales, which we, 
their offspring now enjoy. I feel it to be a solemn and pleasant duty which we owe to them, ourselves, and our children to adopt some method of familiarizing ourselves with the sacrifices which that noble and heroic band has made for the love of their God and their religion and for the religious freedom of their posterity and mankind. I believe it to be our duty and our heritage to place ourselves in a position where we can best take up and carry on the noble and stupendous work which they so well commenced under hardships and privations almost unparalleled in the history of the world. One of the many profitable objects of such an organization might be the obtaining and compiling of the genealogies of the Utah pioneers that their desires and labors in settling these valleys and building temples might be forwarded and continued by their children after them, and that our children and our children's children through all coming time might be taught to cherish, revere, and emulate their sublime fidelity and sterling, sturdy worth. Daughters of the future, we are the daughters of Annie's future. We are the children through all coming time that were Annie's vision. We are the keepers of the past for Annie's organization, Daughters of Utah Pioneers. After Annie gave this speech at the meeting, she had the elections and she herself was elected as the president. One of the first orders of business after this, President Hyde appointed a committee to develop the constitution and bylaws for the new society. Nine articles were written. They provided the framework for the organization. Article 10 was a list of the charter members consisting of 47 names. However, according to Mrs. Hyde's records, there were 46 people present at the meeting. Hmm, what a dilemma. I looked at the list of all 47 women who signed that roll, and I looked up every single one of their names, and in doing so, I found that there was a lady at the meeting named Armida Snow Young. She was the daughter of Lorenzo Snow and the wife of Brigham Morris Young, who was a son of the prophet Brigham Young. Armida Snow Young signed the roll twice. Annie was right. There were 40, there were 46 people at the museum. She was right as it seems she almost always was. Truly, we are and will continue to be Annie's daughters of the future and keepers of the past. I appreciate so much all of the work of all of the Daughters of Utah Pioneers, our international board, our executive board, our regional representatives, the company presidents and officers, the camp officers, and all Daughters of Utah Pioneers. As we work to keep Annie's vision alive, we truly are Daughters of the Future and Keepers of the Past. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I invite you to watch the next video about the training that would have come in our seminar meeting. Thank you and be safe this year. Be careful.